Hello everyone, I hope that you're well. I'm doing a little Valentine's weekend vlog this weekend. I have a few treats planned and it's Saturday today and I've just been setting up a special afternoon tea for my mum, which if you watched the tea reads on Friday, you'll know she had a bit of a tough week and she's not going to be in the vlog this weekend because I didn't want her to feel like she had to film and her scalding from the boiling water was quite bad. So she's just taking the weekend to relax and feel better. But I felt she definitely deserved a bit of pampering. So I've laid out an afternoon tea for us both. I still have a few things to add to it, which I'm going to unpack with you. But let me show you the setup, how it's looking right now. So I've set up our tea just in the kitchen, at the kitchen table, so it's quite informal. And I have a few things from Betty's, of course, which I can't wait to have with Mum. I ordered some mini fat rascals from Betty's, which we both adore. They're a bit like scones, but they're even tastier than scones I think they're so lovely and then I ordered this chocolate cake with apricot jam in it from Betty's as well that looks absolutely delicious we have our love buns <laughs> that we made earlier in the week and I do have some bubbles as well that I'll pop later I'm going to light the candles and then I'm going to open up this Fortnum, May, Fortnum and Mason basket with you so we can see what's inside. Okay, so I'm gonna just pour myself a cup of tea. I've banished mum from the kitchen while I've been getting all this ready, so it'll be a surprise for her when she comes in, which I'm excited about. But I'm going to open up this lovely little Fortnum tamper with you, see what's inside. I think there should be some lovely goodies to add to my little Valentine afternoon tea table, which I am very excited about. I thought it'd be nice to do the afternoon tea on Saturday because we're going to have a nice supper tomorrow evening. And if you have a big tea before supper, you don't have so much appetite. So I thought we'd spread out the treats a little bit. And let's see what's inside. I absolutely love Fortnum tampers. It's so exciting to get one. Also a little bit of Royal Blend tea. That's one of my favorite of their teas. I love it. And this is loose leaf, which is nice. I like the tiny size because sometimes when you get different teas, it's nice to just try them out a little bit. So I've made myself just some ordinary Yorkshire tea, but I might do some special tea for when mum comes and we have the proper afternoon tea. Oh look, a really tiny little box of champagne truffles. You can see that, but it's so, <laughs> so pretty and that will be perfect for just two of us can have some couple little truffles each so i'll put that on the table another tea afternoon blend the, the dilemma should i use royal blend or afternoon blend i think i'll have to use afternoon blend for the tea this afternoon that will be really nice i'll put that there for now I'm going to be using this cute little hamper for sure in the future. It's absolutely adorable. I'll try not to get straw all over the place at the moment though. Oh, what's this? The Fortnum's fruit cake. That's so sweet. I love the dinky little sizes. That looks really adorable. I don't know if I'll unseal it now because I don't think we need more cake, <laughs> but it looks really cute. I think it'll just be a really sweet little fruit cake in that. So that's really lovely. And 
let's see. Oh, good a jam. They're Fortnum, strawberry and champagne preserve. This is one of my favourites of their jams. So I'm really pleased to have that. Might want a little bit of jam with our fat rascals. So I'll leave this on the table too. And the fact that it has champagne as well as strawberries just makes it perfect. I don't know if there's anything else in here. Oh, yes, there is. Ooh. Oh, talking of champagne, <laughs> that's fabulous. Just a little bottle of champagne. I'm going to pop this in the fridge straight away because then it's a bit fancier than Prosecco. <laughs> and we can have a little glass of champagne each and this will feel very festive. And my mum definitely deserves a bit of spoiling this weekend so I'm really excited to enjoy this together and have a fabulous afternoon tea. Hello again, so the afternoon tea was definitely a success. <laughs> Mum was really thrilled which was lovely and everything was delicious so I'm feeling so celebratory this weekend actually it's lovely and it's lovely to get a bit dressed up and just make an occasion of this weekend. I think because we are in lockdown, it's all the more important to make the most out of whatever occasions in the calendar there are right now. And it's made me feel, I don't know, just a lot more cheerful and excited this weekend to be planning some fun things. So it's been really lovely actually. And I'm so thrilled because Mum surprised me with some presents, which I saved to open with you. I showed great restraint <laughs> and I really can't wait to find out what these are because they're from one of my very favourite shops called Choosing Keeping, which is a beautiful stationery shop in London. Of course it's closed right now, but they do online shopping and deliveries. So I'm really excited to see what mum chose. You can see the pretty choosing keeping stickers and sort of swallow on the wrapping. And she had everything wrapped. It just looks so beautiful. So let's find out what's in here. I absolutely adore stationery. I'm sure you know that already or it wouldn't come as a surprise <laughs> if you don't. But it's one of my favourite things. I love getting pretty cards and notebooks and my mum knows that. And I have been missing being able to go shopping for some new stationery actually. It was always a real treat to go to a beautiful shop in London like I love the stationery room at Liberty's as well and that was often something I would do at the start of a new year would be to go and pick out a beautiful new notebook and a few cards and just bits and bobs of stationery and of course I didn't get to do that this year so I'm so excited that oh wow at that I love that my mum always chooses the best gift she's so clever oh it's so pretty it comes with a little sticker plate to go inside and it's lined this will make such a lovely writing journal oh look at the marbled edges of the paper too, that is absolutely stunning. It feels so lovely too, it's sort of cloth bound and it just feels beautiful. This opens up so well. I love it when they lie flat like that and with lined paper, that's going to be absolutely fabulous because I spoke on an earlier vlog about some of my goals for 2021 and how I like to 
separate the year into chunks almost in terms of goals and my goal for the first three months of this year has really been about establishing healthy routines, getting back into exercise and all of that and that's been going really well which I'm really happy about and I really wanted to establish those sort of good habits at the start of this year because my next sort of goal for the second quarter of the year is to really focus on some of my creative writing which my mum knows about so I think her inspiration for getting me some journals by the look of it was to help me with writing down some of my ideas and things like that for when I really come to start to do a bit more creative writing so it's such a thoughtful gift from her. This is so pretty. I love the pink ribbon on this one and I have to say this beautiful wrapping paper as well. It's quite fun because one of our neighbours makes her own cards so she always wants little bits of paper and things like that so if any of this I don't use myself then I know that she'll be really pleased to get some pretty paper Ooh. and it is such lovely wrapping paper you've done such a nice job as you know my mum if you watch my vlogmas videos my mum doesn't wrap <laughs> so it's really nice that she got them to wrap them can't wait to see oh wow that's so gorgeous another notebook but it's like an extra thick one oh again it's got like these beautiful slightly marbled pages I don't know if that really comes up on camera but there's a slight shading to the edges which is so pretty this one is blank which is also really nice but again it just folds folds open so nicely. I'm gonna to have to have a think about what I want to use each of these notebooks for. That's going to be really fun. Like which one I might use to actually write down ideas for books, which one I might use to maybe start writing part of a story. I don't know, I'm gonna to have to have a think. And of course for all my vlog content, I love to plan that out by hand as well. So I'll have to think which, what, what I'm going to do with each journal. That's just the sort of decision I love to make. <laughs> That's going to keep me very happy this weekend as well. This one's quite a bit bigger. I'm not quite sure what this is. Have a look. All the ribbon is so pretty. I always save ribbon from things like this and from bouquets of flowers for instance sometimes those come tied in ribbon because I like to use ribbon quite often in my photography so it's always nice to get some different colours I love how they put their little sticker on everything I think that's a really nice touch it's so pretty try and peel it off carefully though It's also nice that they've used different wrapping paper for each thing as well. I think they're so pretty. Definitely the next best thing to going to the shop myself. In fact, this is really lovely having it as a wrapped surprise. So pretty. Have a look. Let me know if you love notebooks and stationery too and what sorts of things you use notebooks for. I mean, I'm a real notebook addict and I have my journal that I write daily in a notebook, but I also love to plan blog content and ideas for articles, for blog posts, for fiction, for non-fiction writing. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Oh, this just might be my favourite so far. Look at that. That is so stunning. You know I love my florals. So <laughs> I absolutely love this one. 
It's such a big size. Oh, look, and it's lined. Wow. This is really special. Oh, and they all have this little plate that you can put your name on for inside, which is lovely. Or on the outside, I guess. But I don't really want to put anything on this beautiful cover. So special. Oh, I love this one. I don't have like a really big notebook. And actually that's something I've been wanting because especially when it comes to planning content sometimes and stuff, you want to have like a really big page to just sort of do a bit of a brain dump and get all of your ideas out and then start putting things together. I love having a big piece of paper, or a bigger notebook to do that kind of creative brainstorming with. So I think I'm definitely going to use this notebook for that. This is going to be like my brainstorming creative projects kind of notebook. This will be absolutely perfect for that. I'm so excited. It's just stunning. Oh, I'm so thrilled. The best Valentine's gift. <laughs> I'm really, really thrilled. I think they're all absolutely beautiful and I can't wait to have a think about how I'm going to use all of the different notebooks, what sorts of projects I'm going to be thinking about, brainstorming, writing about in these. I think that's so exciting and it makes me look forward to April and starting to really focus on my next set of goals for 2021, my writing and my creative projects. So that's so special. I'm going to go down and thank mum now, <laughs> have a chat with her about them because they were such beautiful gifts I'm so excited with them. Hello everyone, so I've come out for a little bit of a walk. It really feels like a spring today. It's so lovely. It's Monday now. Mum and I had a really quiet day on Sunday, which was really lovely. I did a lot of reading, which I'll talk to you about when I'm back home, because I really want to share the books that I've just read with you. They're so good. Well, one I'm still reading, but yeah, I'll talk to you more about that in a minute. I'm out getting some fresh air this afternoon. It really does feel like spring is in the air a bit. It was a freezing cold weekend, but today I stepped outside and it just smelt like spring. There was that freshness in the air and I thought I'd just go for a little bit of a walk. I want to try and pick a few snowdrops to have a little posy of them for when I go home. Thank you for all of your well wishes about my mum by the way. She was in quite a lot of pain over the weekend and she still just isn't really herself today so she's just taking it really quiet and I mean she's doing okay but it was a really bad scold so it's sensible that she's having a rest and I'm going to bring a little posy of snowdrops back for her. It's a really different experience walking in the wood in the winter time. I'll show you. It's just so bare. So different from when we arrived in the summer. So, yeah, it's quite interesting. I'm not sure if, if I've ever even really walked in the wood at winter time, which sounds very strange, I'm sure, but I'm not sure if I have, and it's just, so beautiful in such an austere way you can really see the lines of the trees and it's very different when it's in sort of full leaf you feel so secluded and separate from the rest of the world in a wood whereas in the winter it's like it's so much more bare you can see so much further you feel much more open and exposed it's quite a different experience but absolutely lovely and it's just nice to get out for some fresh air today so I'm going to carry on having a bit of a walk um, find a few snowdrops and then go back home have a cup of tea and I'm going to tell you about these books <laughs> so see you in a bit And here's my little posy of snowdrops. 
I think it looks very sweet. So I'm home now after my walk. It was really lovely. And I've got my cup of tea to warm up a little bit because although it was much warmer out, there was still a bit of a wind. So <laughs> nice to come in and have a cup of tea. Mm. And I've got quite a bit to do this afternoon. For one thing, I have to edit this vlog and upload it. And I also have to look at um, an article that I've written, but it's just been sent back to me by the magazine and they want me to review it one more time, check there aren't any mistakes and that I'm happy with any alterations and things like that. So I need to look at that this afternoon too and respond to a few emails. But I wanted to take a little moment now to chat to you about the books that I read and started over the weekend. So... It was so nice, especially on Sunday, to, to just have a bit of a self-care day for both mum and me. And self-care for me, of course, always involves some reading time. That's so important and I really enjoyed being able to just curl up with a book on Sunday. It was wonderful. And I did quite a bit of reading. I finished Cousin Harriet by Susan Tweedsmuir or Susan Bucken. I've spoken about Susan Bucken's books on the podcast on YouTube before and I was really excited to read her novels. This one I really enjoyed. I think you can tell that Susan Tweedsumir was a real fan of Jane Austen. Cousin Harriet reminded me quite a bit of Emma and in fact Harriet is reading Emma in this book, which I think is quite significant. So Harriet Waverley is still quite a young woman, but she's leading a very isolated life at the start of this novel. She's taking care of her invalid father, very much an Emma Woodhouse type character, only she's in some ways I think she's portrayed more realistically than Emma in that Susan Tweedsmuir shows Lady Harriet's life as being quite lonely, very isolated. And what I really enjoyed about this book was all of the detail about Victorian day-to-day -day life. And you hear a lot more about the sort of domestic duties that a woman in Lady Harriet's position would have had at that time. Obviously, this is later than Emma. This is set in Victorian England, but it was so interesting to just get more of an insight as to the sort of chores and daily tasks that women in that position in society would hold. So I really enjoyed all of that detail. And the book is told mainly in letters and then it swaps to diary form, which I also enjoyed. And what really sets the ball rolling in terms of plot is when Lady Harriet's cousin Charlotte arrives and Charlotte confesses to Harriet that she is in fact pregnant. She's been seduced by a cousin of Harriet, who's a real black sheep of the family, and he refuses to marry her. And the whole drama involves how Lady Harriet can help Charlotte without there being a scandal. So it was a, a bit more risque in some ways than I expected from this book, but Susan Tweedsmuir wrote about the topic so interestingly. She herself was born and brought up in the late Victorian era, and you realise this sort of thing must have actually happened quite a bit. And it's so interesting how the women in this novel can really only rely on other women. What Lady Harriet does in the end is she reaches out to her former governess who comes to stay and advise Harriet on what on earth to do with Charlotte. And it's actually quite a feminist novel in some ways. Lady Harriet speaks very strongly against her male cousin who has seduced Charlotte. She's so angry that he's allowed to get away scot-free. And it's Charlotte who has to bear the brunt of what happened, who risks exposure and scandal and 
infamy, really. And I thought that was a really strong part of the book. It's also very interesting because Susan Tweedsville in general talks a lot about women's work in this novel. And she shows how hard women worked in those days, but how restricted their work really was. As I've already said, Lady Harriet is very much involved in all of the duties surrounding running a big country house, which keeps her very busy. But the work that she does, although tedious, although tiring, is really very boring. She inspects the store cupboard, she has to write letters for her father, she doesn't really get an opportunity to use her brain. And there's quite a poignant moment in the book where Lady Harriet is reflecting on her education and realising that she received a very, a very good education from her governess, but most of that education she has not been able to use. Even though, for instance, she's very good at maths and keeping accounts, her father will never talk to her about the business side to the estate and dealing with the farm and agriculture. And although Lady Harriet can tell that her father is worried sometimes about the finances, she isn't allowed as a woman to become involved in that side of running the estate. It isn't considered appropriate and she isn't just allowed into that world even though she could be very good at it. And in general, women in this book who work hard, Lady Harriet, her governess, there's a character called Mrs. Abbott who Lady Harriet befriends and she's the wife of one of the sort of local curates. All of these women know the value of work, they all work hard to support either themselves or their families in some way, even though they're all from very different social backgrounds. And it's Charlotte in the book who can't sew, has no inclination to learn anything, d reads only the trashiest novels, never wants to improve her mind, is not interested in earning her own living in any way. And it's her who is seen as morally compromised. And in the end, well, I'm not going to spoil actually any of the book for you. <laughs> You'd have to read it. But you can see that Susan Tweedsmuir approves much more of women who do set value on education and on employment of some kind, whether domestic or paid for employment, than those who do not. And that was quite an interesting theme running through this book. Like I said, there are quite a few parallels to Emma as well. Lady Harriet's father is very much of a Mr. Woodhouse character. He's rather selfish. He's an invalid. I think he actually is portrayed more sympathetically in the end than Mr. Woodhouse because he's shown as a bit less selfish in this book than Mr. Woodhouse really is in Emma. Uh, but yes, there are quite a few parallels to Emma which I enjoyed, although Lady Harriet herself is a very different personality from Emma. She's no matchmaker. And I think she is also more lonely, more isolated in some ways than Emma, less content with her lot in life. But Lady Harriet's life does improve in this book and there is a happy ending for her, which is fabulous. But I so enjoyed it. Like I said, there's so much fascinating detail about Victorian society, about different ways that women worked within that society. And there are just some details I enjoyed. Like for instance, I never knew that when visiting a house, for instance, Lady Harriet goes and stays at a house in London and she goes to visit a cousin of hers and she brings her lady's maid along with her. And the lady's maid is entertained by the sort of housekeeper and maids of the London household and they show her their mistress's beautiful gowns and their linen cupboard 
and things like that. And I, I never realised that that happened, that ladies would bring their maids along when they went visiting and that these maids would be sort of shown the fashions, the dresses and the linens of the house. And just that kind of detail I really enjoyed. So I thought that it was such a good read and really great Valentine's read too. It's also set mainly over winter, so it was a sort of perfect time to read this. And it made me want to pick up Susan Tweedsmuir's next book, Dashbury, Dashbury Park, straight away, so I did, and you can see I've read quite a bit of it already. I'm really enjoying this one as well. I think Susan Tweedsmuir isn't such a great stylist. I think of the two so far, Cousin Harriet was the better written. This is a little bit more stilted in terms of the sentences and the language, but there are still some lovely descriptive passages in it. She seems to be continuing a lot of the themes that interested her in uh, Cousin Harriet, and so far I'm really enjoying it. Now, Dashbury Park, I think, is a lot more influenced by Mansfield Park. The clue is in the title. I think Twe Susan Tweedsmere was obviously a big fan of Jane Austen, which I am too, so that's rather lovely. And just as uh, Cousin Harriet had a few parallels with Emma, this one is reminding me a bit of Mansfield Park already in that there's a young girl called Lucy who's been taken on as a kind of poor relation, given a home in the very grand Dashbury Park, and she has two very difficult aunts, one of whom is really not very pleasant and works poor Lucy to the bone, sending her on all sorts of errands, making her do things all the time, so yes, real Fanny Price vibes I'm getting from this, but it's quite a different story as well. It's also about the young heir to Dashbury Park who has mainly been brought up abroad, he loves living in Italy, and he really doesn't want to take on the responsibilities of a large inherited estate, but his uncle insists upon him coming to the park and starting to learn some of the business in what it really means to run a house of that kind of size. So again, there's lots of interesting detail about Victorian society at that time, and I'm really enjoying it. I think there's going to be a little romance in this too, although at the moment there are two men who are definite potentials for Lucy, and I'm not sure which it's going to be yet. So I'm looking forward to finding that out. I think that's gonna be really interesting. And yes, I mean, I'm loving the sort of nods to Jane Austen from these two novels as well, and I think if you like Jane Austen, you would definitely enjoy these. I mean, like I said, Susan Tweedsmuir isn't a stylist, so, you know, nowhere near as well written, but they're still really enjoyable reads, full of great period detail. So I'm really enjoying them. I would definitely recommend seeing if you can get hold of any secondhand copies of her books. Oh, what's also really nice is that Lady Harriet makes an appearance in Dashbury Park as well, so it was really nice to meet her again in this, but it's also, they're not a series, but Cousin Harriet is the first, followed by Dashbury Park, and then there's a third one, which I don't have, it's so hard to find, I hope I'll be able to track it down at some point or that someone will republish these because I'm really enjoying them. Um, yeah, there's a third one in which I think Lucy makes a bit of an appearance. So I'm hoping I'll be able to get that at some point. Oh, I also wanted to show you because I've made up my mind how I'm going to use these notebooks. This one I'm going to use for making notes on the books that I'm reading. So you can see I've already started with these are my notes on Lady Harriet, and I've started a little bit my notes on Dashbury Park. And I'm really happy with this. You might remember that I had a specific reading journal last year that I wrote notes, um, that I wrote in notes about the books I was reading, but it can find you to only one page per book. And because I, knew that I wanted to talk about these books on YouTube, I didn't like to review these books, I made quite extensive notes on them. And 
it's really helpful then to have quite a few pages that I can use. I don't like being restricted to just one page. And this notebook is really perfect for that. So this is going to be my, what I'm reading, notes on what I'm reading and a sort of record of that notebook. So I'm really pleased and I've started it already, which is fabulous. This is my new daily journal. I was using the slightly foxed one, but I'd actually used quite a lot of it already. And yeah, I've started in this one this morning. So um, I love it. And also it's lined and the slightly foxed one that I had isn't lined. And for a daily journal, I do actually prefer lined pages. So that's what I'm using that one for. And then this one I'm going to use when I really start writing up um, my ideas and a very early rough draft of a novel that I have an idea for that I really want to write. So I'm really excited and I think it'll be perfect for that because of the huge pages I can write every other line which I think will be really handy when I'm working out story ideas and I'm writing some chapters and things because that way I can make alterations easier when I write every other line and it's just such a nice big notebook to work with that I think it will be lovely for that so I'm feeling really inspired by my lovely notebooks from my mum which is wonderful but it's been such a nice Valentine's weekend. I hope you had a lovely Valentine's weekend. Thank you again, like I said, for all of your good wishes. And I'll see you again with another video on Wednesday. So until then, goodbye.